Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Taking out a fun and exciting episode for you guys today because we're going to be going over Rosalie's Moopin GUI or graphical user interface and doing an entire setup, guys, so you guys can use this for your N64 emulation needs. Because a few weeks ago, I went over some of the updates to Rosalie's Moopin GUI. I'm just going to call it Moopin from now on to make it easier on myself. And I will say that this thing's definitely gotten a lot better since I last took a look at it. You guys asked to see some of this content, so I figured I'd make it. Before I get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But honestly, Rosalie's Moopin GUI is going to be a good time for everyone because it is based on Moopin Plus 64, and that definitely is doing a lot better of a performance job than the last time I took a look at it on the channel. Now, I will leave a link in the description below over to the GitHub page where you can grab this. You'll see here, as of five days ago, at least of the recording of this tutorial, there was a new version. So go ahead, you can look at all the different changes, kind of go through what's going on here, but at the bottom, you'll see an Assets tab. You're going to grab whatever operating system you need here, but for Windows, is this tutorial is based on there's going to be two there's going to be a setup and there's going to be a portable version i always recommend the portable version it just works better for me and the way i like to install things you can put this in any folder you want it can be on your desktop it can be in your downloads this is where it's going to live so you'll see here i've already extracted it but you'll extract that zip and you'll end up with a brand new folder there rmg portable windows 64 you can even rename this to whatever you want or you can leave it exactly as is and if you scroll down past all the dll's you'll actually see the executable now i recommend making a games folder directly in this actual installation that way you can put all of your different n64 games and basically point the emulator to where those are going to live and basically you just put any file you want in here z64 is my recommendation then once you actually set the file path in the emulator everything will show up and you'll be ready to run it although we do have a lot of different setups to go through as far as the settings are concerned but when you first launch it, you're going to see set ROM directory here, and that's why I recommend putting the games folder in there. You can honestly call it whatever you want. I just call it games. And once you've actually got into that folder, just hit select folder, and Rosalie's Moopin GUI will auto populate every single game in there and get it ready to run. But we really have to get some control set up, so that's going to be the next step here binding all of our inputs. So if we go up to settings and down to input, you're going to see an entire controller map for the N64 controller. And for input device, you have to select whatever you want because by default, it's going to say none. I'm using the 8-bit Do controller, that N64 style, and in here, you'll bind everything you want. Now, you don't need to use an N64 style controller. You can use anything, but honestly, the button layout gets a little bit confusing, so you might have to kind of pivot up your expectations on exactly where to put every single button. If you use a PlayStation 5 controller, controller and Xbox Series X controller, you have enough buttons there to actually be able to interact with the game, but you might not actually have them in the places you want. But you can go ahead and configure every single button here. You just click the box, go ahead and push the button on the corresponding controller you're using, or even the keyboard if you want to go that way, and everything will be 100% set up for you. And honestly, I really do think you should pick up, if you want to start emulating N64 games better, some sort of controller that actually has that button layout. The 8-bit though does a really good job, even if the actual analog stick can sometimes have a little bit of a dead zone issue that might need some adjustment. It is very comfortable in the hand, and it gives you the entire layout of the N64 buttons that you'd want to use, including all of the Cs, and even two different Z buttons on the left and right hand side of the controller on the top. If you don't use a standard N64 layout, Layout, things can get a little bit weird, but I'm sure you can retrain your brain on that one. But when I hear people say they don't really like playing N64 via emulation because they have trouble playing the games, 99 out of 100 times it's going to be because the controller layout is not right. And there's also the Retro Fighters Brawler 64, another awesome option. I will leave links to both these controllers in the description below. Be aware that they are not affiliate links. I'm not looking to make 10 cents off your purchase, they're just there to help you out. But it makes N64 emulation all that better when you actually have the right controller for the job so just take it from me if you want to play a lot of these things and you don't own one yet definitely pick one up especially for stuff like Star Fox 64 I just feel like having the original controller makes the game that much better to control in the hand we're going to go into our first soundtrack sample here because one thing that Moopin Plus 64 seems to not have an issue with or go for did is a little bit of sound stuttering so go ahead and listen I'll be right back with a lot more settings We're entering Corneria City now. This is horrible. Hey, 
Everybody stay alert! I mean, that sounds like Star Fox 64 to me. And when I did the Gopher 64 video, I did show you an example of where the Bomberman hero music like to hitch. And it's something that doesn't happen in Rosalie's Moopin GUI. And that really is the reality of N64 emulation. No one emulator is perfect. That is not a knock on the developers or their emulators. I just kind of go between Ari's, something like Gopher 64 and this, when I want to play specific games, because I find that each one kind of renders a slightly different result. But as far as Star Fox 64 is concerned, sounds great, controls great. Definitely something I recommend. But let's start getting into the nitty gritty of the actual settings here, going to the graphics window where basically everything happens. The windowed resolution is where you can basically dial up the internal rendering resolution, and I go straight to 1600 by 1200 to max it out. For the games that do support widescreen, you can switch the aspect ratio to 4x3 over to 16x9. You're also going to see we have both FXAA as well as MSAA anti-aliasing, and if you want a description on what exactly they do, just go ahead and hold your mouse cursor over the actual description, and you will see this entire drop-down menu giving you details on what everything does. This is something that is subjective. You might leave it off completely, you might change it per game, you can kind of just play around with it. You also have anisotropic filtering here, off by default, and you go all the way to high with it. As far as the emulation tab is concerned, I leave everything normal, and I don't check enable per pixel lighting. It's better quality high level emulation only, just one of those things I don't use it. If you're curious, HLE means high level emulation, and LLE means low level emulation. One thing you might want to play around with is the 2D elements. You'll see here it says render 2D elements in N64 resolution, best quality can be slow. You can actually bring down the 2D assets, the stuff that you see on menus, to a lower resolution, that way you don't get as many lines through them when you actually see them on screen. As far as the frame buffer tap is concerned, unless you know what you're doing in here, leave everything as is. You're not really going to achieve much playing around here. Just leave it as it's been set out of the box. You will get the best time. You can actually texture, kind of improve those with filtering, but I don't think any of those texture filters look as good. It's just the Vaseline look, but you can use texture packs as well in this little menu right here. So if a game does have a texture pack, that's where you're going to load it up. On screen display tab, you can kind of just pretend that doesn't exist, nothing I ever use whatsoever. And the hotkey tab can have a couple useful items if you're doing stuff like loading HD textures, if you want to apply V-Sync or CA frame per second counter, which can sometimes be useful to me. So if you want to bind anything, just click the little box that says click me, and then go ahead and bind that to whatever key you want on your keyboard, because FPS can be useful in some comparison videos I do, so every once in a while I do want to see that. But honestly, that's basically the long and short of getting this thing set up, and then you double click a game in the actual menu, and it'll automatically launch in. And I will say right now, something like Cruise and Exotica here absolutely looks incredible in Moopin. All of the enhancements, all of these bright colors, the improvements in the actual image, this just makes it feel and play like a better game. But this is going to be your mileage may vary territory. I really feel like the enhancements look better or worse depending on the art style of the game in and of itself. Something like Exotica absolutely shines on Rosalie's Moopin GUI. Other games that have a little bit more of a muted color profile aren't going to look as good even though they will be improved. I just don't want you to think that every single game you could possibly play on this is somehow going to be magically looking better just because you use this program. It really just depends on the game. Leave me a comment down below and you tell me what do you think of this image and what is your default de facto N64 emulator because again I use three different ones depending on what I'm trying to achieve and a lot of you wanted to see some content on this particular emulator so I figured why not spin a video up for you guys. And moving over to Super Smash Bros., a game that I am no expert on, everything seems to control perfectly fine, so before you ask about latency, there was nothing in this experience that made me think that I wasn't able to pull off the moves I did remember, although honestly I don't remember all of them. But this is another game that I think really does well with all the enhancements, because it really does use a very colorful kind of art set, and it really does enhance the overall look of the models, because these definitely are not high polygon, but getting them to look a little bit better, definitely always a good time. And we're going to move into our second soundtrack sample as well here, just so you can get a good idea of what this is actually doing to the sound, because again, slightly better than Gopher 64 in some games. 45 seconds, and I'll be right back with just a bit more.
And that sounds exactly like it should, but do be aware that I actually had to reduce that down by 8 decibels in DaVinci Resolve, because this emulator will definitely have different volume levels depending on what game you're playing. So if one game sounds good, don't be surprised, especially if you're wearing headphones, if the next game sounds way too loud and you have to turn it down almost immediately. I wish there was some sort of built-in kind of audio regulation, but I would say that in almost every single emulator, where the sound loves to vary depending on the game you play. But if you follow all the steps in this tutorial, you'll be able to download Rosalie is Moopin GUI. You'll get all your games in, you'll get all the diverse settings set up, and you'll be able to sit down and enjoy whatever N64 game you want. Leave me a comment down below and you tell me what is your favorite N64 game of all time. For me, it'll always and forever be Bomberman 64. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, but we're done. Donkey Kong is going to keep smashing some Yoshis here, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.